Hey everybody, this is your friendly neighborhood dandelion, and welcome to our second episode of KH Insider Off the Chain, the new interview series where we have off-the-cuff discussions with people involved in the Kingdom Hearts universe. Just like last time, I am joined by my nearly silent producer, engineer, the Ross to my Frasier, which nobody who's listening to this is old enough to get that joke, Rob Carballo, owner and manager of GeekBeatRadio.com. Check it out. They stream geeky and nerdy music 24-7, and they do live shows at least once a week where they talk geek, they talk nerd, and they have all kinds of special guests. Today, our special guest is Square Enix's favorite voice actor at the moment, appearing as Edgar in World of Final Fantasy, Eve in Near Automata, perhaps best known as Prince Noctis in Final Fantasy 15, and Kingdom Hearts fans know him as the Master of Masters in 2.8's back cover. Please welcome the talented Ray Chase. Hey, guys. Wonderful to be here. It's really cool. Always reticent to do a Kingdom Hearts related thing because it is a, a series that I'm just not familiar with. But PJ here has assured me that there's not going to be too many hardball questions, which is great. No, not at all. You yeah. know, I, I want you guys to have as much fun sending questions. And I want Ray to have as much fun as possible so that he'll do more stuff like this with the Kingdom Hearts fans in the future. Awesome. Um I know at a recent con that you said that you loved the Kingdom Hearts fandom, even though we are, quote, long suffering. <laughs> You are long suffering. That's one of the reasons why I'm not one of the people to first join a lot of fandoms uh, because a lot of them can be very disappointing. I'll usually see how something goes and then say like, okay, then I'll decide to go on. Um, The fact that everyone seems to be so unhappy all the time makes me not want to get into (laughs) Kingdom Hearts. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's not that we're unhappy. It's just... No, I think that's fair. I think that's totally <laughs> fair. We've just been waiting a really long time for Kingdom Hearts three, yeah, but not brutal. without some not without some good uh, journeys along the way, which is part of the reason why we're even talking to you is because you got to be in one of those. I did play uh, uh, the mobile game, which Excellent. was which was good. Um, but then I realized how long it was, and then I said, "Oh, I can't do that." It's impossible um, for a newcomer. Yeah, to... it's, there's no end, and and then you go to the Reddit. And it's just people, again, saying how terrible and mad they are. And so you go, okay, maybe maybe there's nothing good to come out of this. Maybe. maybe. But you know what? I I really love the mobile game. Um, the story of it, I think, is my favorite in the series. I wish that it were on a console and easier for newcomers to dive into so they could catch up. But that makes me really happy that that cover happened in the first place to kind of catch some people up with some aspects of it and to get to hear the voices of characters that we see in the mobile game. I wanted to open up this question. Um, I don't think anybody has ever asked you this before, and it's a little intrusive, so I'm so sorry. Uh If you're uncomfortable with it, we can nix it out uh, when we edit it in post. But I want you to be prepared for this, okay? Let's do it. Like I said, I don't think anyone's asked you this before, so you you can take your time answering it. Okay, so, Ray Chase, what is in the box? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, no idea. It's one of those things where we just do, when we record that uh, for the game, or for the movie, rather, um, because it's just a movie, you don't need to know what's going on. You just go line by line by line. And then they direct you how they direct you, and so you're able to do that. With a game, that's harder because there's thousands and thousands of lines, so you kind of have to really know what the heck is going on. But yeah, for, for Kingdom Hearts, it was very much... Uh, if I had a question, it was just uh, it's it's kept under wraps and for a good reason, because everyone wants to know it sure. increases the uh, increases the hype. There were some guesses on, on Facebook. Someone said, I bet it's a whole trunk full of Reese's Puff cereal. <laughs> I'm like, mm. <laughs> okay. that would be in character with a master to have nothing really be in it. That Absolutely. would be would do. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of like the briefcase in Pulp. Yes, uh, exactly. In Pulp Fiction, like, yeah. yeah, a MacGuffin, as it were. Uh, yeah, MacGuffin, exactly. Um, so let's go into your background a little bit. It says on Wikipedia that you were born in New Jersey, but your hometown is Las Vegas. That is true, yes. I can't really imagine Las Vegas being kind of... I, I think it's probably because I'm oversaturated with like the media image of Vegas mm-hmm. casinos and whatnot. But I can't imagine what it would be like to grow up there. So what well, what was the childhood like for Sweet Baby Ray? For Sweet Baby Ray was only in New Jersey, but uh, Child Ray was in Vegas, uh, and I went to all primary school, middle school, high school there. I went to college in, at USC in LA, but I uh, spent most of my years in Las Vegas. It was, I was uh, in a place called um, Summerlin, which is in the northwest side of town, um, and it was, it was the fastest growing city in the U.S. Uh, during the 90s while I was there. So it was, everything was new, 
there was tons of families moving in from back east. Well, my family was one of them. And it was a lot of just new stuff. And then, like, we lived on the edge of town. So we lived, and now it's not the edge of town. It used to be my, uh, our, our little housing development uh, was there. And then the desert was on the other side of it. Um, since then, the city's grown a, a little bit more towards the mountains and Red Rock and the west side of town. Um, but it it uh, it wasn't as sin like as you would believe because you grew <laughs> up in it because right. it was it was a thing you would go to the strip just to get dinner. It was not a thing to oh my god go go have a crazy time. It was just oh what are we gonna do? Let's see a magic show. There were theme parks on the strip. Um, MGM had this amazing theme park. There had the circus circus excuse me the circus circus um, Adventure Dome and stuff like that. Uh, Wet and Wild, right. all these like amazing kid-friendly attractions that have since gone the way of the dinosaur because we've been now vegas is more of a young person city so the the palms and stuff like that it's much more party friendly but not necessarily gambling like that's not even what people go there for as um a, a youngster were you big into cartoons did did any of that kind of theatricality whether it be an animation acting in television theater, when did that really first start to get its hooks into you? I mean, absolutely. From the beginning, that's all I watched were cartoons. Um, and, uh, and I played video games, which didn't have voices back then. But then, uh, once I was a, a teenager and N64 came out, then you started to see finally, Oh wow. Mario can talk and, and video games are, are a place where you can actually have voices. Um, mm-hmm. That was, those were all during my formative years. So yeah, I definitely grew up steeped heavily in that sort of stuff. Um, Cartoon Network I watched mostly, and then stuff like The the Critic was a, a big favorite show of mine. Uh, and um, and even like Mystery Science Theater, because that is that is voiceover. Robbie said in an interview, Robbie Damon, not too long ago, he said that for him, the formative video game experience, where he realized, oh, this is how this is evolving and all video games are going to be fully voice acted and they're going to take their time. This is a thing now was final fantasy 10. Um, and for me it was kingdom hearts, which came out like a year after final fantasy 10. Do you, which video game was your like shake up where it was like, Oh, this is, this is a career. This is something that could actually happen to me. Honestly, it was not a video game. I never really thought of that as a a, a viable way of of making a living because it was so it was still rare. It was still not something that happened a whole lot. So it wasn't um, or they or they had other ways of doing it. Like I played a lot of of uh, Banjo Kazooie and stuff where it's it's that that garbled speech and you saw a lot of garbled speech stuff that was coming out at the time. Like right. The they're they're doing stuff. like efforts and voice box. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you had those kind of things. And so you didn't know which way it was going to go. And, uh, but I did know that I really loved theater and film and stuff like that. So that was what I was set on and, uh, and, and animation and going like, well, okay, this is what, this is what I know I can do. It wasn't until I graduated college, really, and I started getting auditions for stuff that you were like, oh, wait a minute, you can actually, these aren't jobs that you can get, and you can audition, and normal people can audition for these. These aren't some sort of secret, sequestered, um, uh, Illuminati type secret. Illuminati type sort of stuff. <laughs> this is, uh, hey, you can you can just get these jobs, and you get paid a couple hundred bucks, and, and that's great. So that's where I started to really learn about it. And I started working in apps at the very beginning. Those were most of my early credits uh, were things like uh, Kick the Buddy and uh, uh, Death Rally. And uh, what was the other? My, my, one of my favorites um, was the Zelda clone kind of thing, uh, Ocean Horn. That was a really oh, good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's since been released on Steam. Really fun. It was, a, it was basically like a Zelda game before Nintendo finally started getting their act together and putting out uh, games for mobile platforms. So moving back to um, college really quick, in USC, did you study theater? Yes, theater and a film minor. Uh, So I heard a story that you met and kind of hung out with Mark Hamill while you were doing a show. This is true. Uh, Yes, I saw, uh, that was in my senior year, I did Brigadoon, and he came to see it. I was uh, one of the main characters, and... uh, for whatever reason, he really liked me and uh, and my performance, and we just hung out and walked around with his family around the grounds of USC, 
uh, and talked about uh, life, the universe, and everything. It was great. Well, you know, that's probably the same time that he actually recorded a voice in Kingdom Hearts. So that's oh, he probably really? sensed it. He probably sensed that he was like, ha ha, yeah, I'll <laughs> tell you exactly how you guys are connected in the Kingdom Hearts lore a little later. Don't worry, oh, everybody. Okay. I got this. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so in between graduating from USC and getting into voice acting, you were a bartender and you did audiobooks and SAT prep and all kinds of different stuff. Yeah, yeah there you go. You did your research. Very good. <laughs> I did, uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I worked for my very first job. I worked as an usher at the Los Angeles Music Center. So I got to see plays and concerts and all that sort of stuff for free um, and got paid $8 an hour for three hour shifts. And then I helped that supplement that with. Um, uh sat prep sort of stuff which was kind of sporadic i worked for a company and then uh got into bartending and got really into bartending i did the craft cocktail stuff and i really enjoyed it and then i got to a certain point when i was doing it for two years i was like hold on a second i'm having too much fun here i thought <laughs> i wanted to be an actor and so i um i gave myself i had two months worth of money saved up and i said all right i'm gonna force myself I will be bankrupt in two months. I have to book a voiceover job. I have to make this work. And I feel like that really helped me really focus on it. When you do, you have nothing but time to spend on going after your dream and nothing else. So every day, and you have a deadline, I think you get really, really motivated. So uh, that one I booked uh, at the very end of the two months, I had booked uh, uh, these uh, Coke Zero campaigns. And those those lasted for like three years. It was a huge lucky strike. I mean, that was crazy looking back like that, that never happens. Um, oh, yeah. uh, but I, uh, I got an agent out of that and, uh, and then started the long, the long haul of slowly meeting cast directors and booking work. And I did 150 plus audiobooks in a two year period, uh, to crazy. support myself while I was auditioning for, for those sort of things. So yeah, it was, uh, it was a long, long journey. Yeah. For us, it seems like it, it's happened so quickly because you are appearing in so many recent titles, but oh, you know. yeah. everybody uh, doesn't know the timeline of those sort of things, which is uh, it's not that I, because I was cast as Noctis that I was in all these titles, they were all being worked on at the same time years ago. So it was one of those things where uh, I just, I just got lucky again. Um, but the dots are harder to connect where, how did he get cast in this versus this? Oh, surely it was because he appeared in this and almost never it's because I appeared in something. It's always because of some random uh, audition that I sent in. That's usually so what it is. Funny. That is so weird. I, which, I mean, it makes totally perfect sense because even though you're great and perfect for all of those roles, particularly in Square Enix games, it just seems odd that they would have someone do so many parts at the same time in a flagship series without, I don't know, a red flag coming up, like, maybe we should not have Noctis be Edgar. Or oh, something. You well, know what definitely. I, mean? I'm, I, I can guarantee that those red flags would have come up had they known. I think right. it's because they are they have the business divisions. They're separated. Square right. in particular has all the different business divisions. Right. And they're all secret and have their own NDAs. So I think I happen to get into each of their business divisions with a different character on a different series. So it was just a crazy weird thing. I, I eventually went to, uh, before 15 was coming out, I went to the um, uh, Square Enix USA to the marketing place just to talk about like, hey, what are, are they going to announce us? All that sort of stuff. And I met a whole bunch of people I had worked on on different games there. And then they started to connect to the dots and were like, oh, my God, what have we done? And it was uh, it was pretty funny. <laughs> Surprise. It's yeah. Right. But the good, the cool thing is one one thing that I'm amazed about. I thought people would get annoyed or tired or like, oh, my God, it's Troy Baker all over again. But um, people have been nice about it, which is really surprising. I'm, I'm happy about that. People have said, oh, great. I'm not. He's in all these games, but I'm not complaining. And that's my favorite. Those are my favorite tweets to see. Yeah, I think it's also because all of the characters are so different from each other. Oh, um, yeah, I'm not using the same voice. Yeah, no, that not definitely. At all. You're super versatile, and just the character, like, you're not playing an archetype from character right. to character either. Yeah, I happen to be do all these different types of characters. You're right, you're right. That helps. So 
Yeah, I think it's really exciting. I remember, I can remember watching the Uncovered event when they were announcing all the Final Fantasy 15 tie-ins and the release date and everything, and and at the end of it going, okay, but who is playing the characters? Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> I remember being so upset by that. It was like, well, why? Because at that point, I think we even knew who the French dubbers were of those oh characters. Gosh. But yes. I was like, yes. why don't we know the English people? Like, yeah. at that point, I think people recognized that Robbie was Prompto. But other than that, it was like, yeah. who is Why? It was why? all unknowns. Yeah, we were all unknowns. Um, and Robbie, it was only because uh, of uh, Sore, because Zestiria came out. And then everybody figured it out. Oh, okay. Because he was using pretty much the same voice. Um, and then, even then, the episode Disguise demo, the voice that you used for Noctis was, I mean, famously, it was different. Most people don't know it's the same guy. Yeah, a lot of people were like, what? And I can remember... Shortly after Uncovered, E3 happened, and at that point, we got our first trailer for Kingdom Hearts 2.8, and the Master of Masters was in it, but I could not recognize the voice, and at that point, I had heard just enough of Noctis to start, for your voice to be familiar, but it was it's your actual voice as opposed to Nox's younger voice. Correct, yeah. And it, it wasn't until the very last trailer, which was the month before release where the Master says um, something like, you'll have to go alone from here on out. He says it in kind of a, a snarky, like higher voice. Yeah. And I was like, that's Noctis. That's Ray yes. Chase. They got Ray Chase to do it. <laughs> but it was another month. And I went back and watched interviews. And they had mentioned Kingdom Hearts to you in passing. And you get this look like, don't do it. Don't say anything. Don't tell anybody. At one point, like, I think Robbie <laughs> even jokes with you and was like, oh, haven't you heard a callback for Kingdom Hearts? And you, like, bite your lip. And I'm like, oh, it's him. I know it's him. That's hilarious. Oh, my gosh. That is very funny. Uh, good job. Good job past me for keeping it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> so the difficult. hardest part about this job. I bet. A lot of people ask, you know, what it was like to actually go to conventions and talk about different things like One Punch Man or be in the audience for different conventions and not get to talk about the biggest JRPG coming out, Final Fantasy XV, or about Kingdom Hearts or about anything. And some actors don't care. Like, Jesse McCartney has been in a bunch of the Kingdom Hearts series, and every time, every time he's in a Kingdom Hearts game, he posts a picture, like an Instagram picture of himself in the booth. And you can see Kingdom Hearts on the screen. And it's like, Jesse, how is Disney not firing you or slapping you with fines right now? Every time. What I want to ask you now is time frame. Because obviously you were working all these things together. Near Automata, Final Fantasy XV, World of Final Fantasy, and Kingdom Hearts. Mm -hmm. So, which came first? I'm assuming Final Fantasy XV in 2014 is when you started? 2014, uh, we started in October of 2014. That was when Duskai, we started that. Let me pull up my little uh, Excel sheet. Aww. If you If you want to do this as a career, it really helps to have an Excel sheet of all the things you've worked on. Even if you think, oh, this is unimportant because you can, if you write down the director's name, the engineer's name, the producer's name, all that sort of stuff, because you'll meet these people again and you want to be able to remember their name because uh, it's it's important. Final Fantasy 15 demo. Then there was Star Ocean 5, which is another Square game that was in right. August of 2015. Then we actually started recording the full game in uh, for uh, Final Fantasy 15 in... Uh, October of 2015. Wow, and then so we did there's a that. whole year between uh, the demo and WoW. Well, no, that's not necessarily, because they're in, in between those, there were still uh, pickups, and I had to do, I had to redo all of my lines. Gotcha. Because there was a big audition process that I had to go through again for Noctis, where I had to redo the voice. Um, and that was about a month. That was in, like, April of 2015. And then in, like, June, July, we, ran, we went back and redid all of Noctis. Uh, lines from the demo in the new voice. So that was a big deal. So then that's when we started. Then we worked on pretty much all the way through the the year. From October all the way through, we were constantly coming in. Then World of Final Fantasy was February of 2016. But I remember I auditioned for that quite a bit earlier. I remember saying that I got caught, that I was cast as Edgar. And I was like, Edgar, didn't I audition for that last year? And I did. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was a ways back. Uh, but that was in... February of 2016, I worked on that. Nier was pretty close to the end. Uh, Nier was August of 2016. Wow. Worked on that. That's so surprising that was, to me. Yeah, so that was they've been working on it for so long. Yeah, I'm sure Kyle and Kira, and, um, Kira Buckland were working on it longer because they were the main right. characters. I only worked on it for one, maybe two 
sessions uh, okay. as Eve. I guess Eve doesn't talk as much, and it's he not a very dialogue-heavy game, despite exactly. it being so long. But it was so good. I It's the last game that I've played, and I got to the part where Eve starts talking, and I I wasn't following it, oh. and uh, it's you, and I'm like, are you serious right now? <laughs> I was happy about it, don't get me wrong, but I was like, man, he was booking some games in the past year. It was crazy. Um, that one we all, I also share it with uh, Tatsuhi Suzuki, who's uh, who's Noctis. Right. Uh, so I think that might have had something to do with why I was cast. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I, they did not know I was at that point because that was still that was August. I was cast before I was revealed as Noctis. Right. So I don't know. Probably not. Mm-hmm. Now that I come back, go back and think about it. I, it must not have. Been. Because it was a different localization company. It was not localized by Square. It was localized by 8.4, who right. is a, um, a very, very good uh, localization company uh, that's independent in Japan and in the U.S. So they probably, I don't know. I'll have to ask them. <laughs> so for a game like Final Fantasy XV, you're pretty much kept on, uh, you're kept aware of what's going on, and you know way more about Noctis than you would the Master or probably even edgar or eve absolutely um, yes yeah that's one of those things where because i was the in going in for years uh and i'm very inquisitive about those sort of things uh, yeah. and it, and it helps that performance i don't know if knowing more about the master would have helped my performance honestly because he is such a tricky guy that he wouldn't be playing his cards or i wouldn't he wouldn't be foreshadowing stuff. He would always be trying to surprise you. Right. So I don't know if my if knowing more would have necessarily helped with my performance, but knowing more about Noct definitely helped. Yeah, I um I was wondering, especially because it's it's not common for Square Enix to, regardless of the business division up until this point, it wasn't common for them to to handle localization the way they had with fifteen. With mm-hmm. fifteen, they they really broke the mold and they really wanted to do something new. They wanted to kind of freshen up the series. Um, but with kingdom hearts, they, they have their formula down more so. So mm-hmm. can you remember, I, I have never heard an audition story for kingdom hearts. Usually when we interview people and they're talking about how they got into the series, they were either personally requested by Tetsuya Nomura to play the part. So like mm-hmm. Haley Joel Osment and wow. Mark Hamill and Leonard Nimoy were all, Nomura's ideas um or they were auditioning for something else with Square Enix like Ben Diskin was auditioning for a Final Fantasy game when they asked him to do Kingdom Hearts or I think with Richard Epcar he who plays Ansem he was in Ghost in the Shell and the character that he played was played by the same guy in Japanese who played his part in Kingdom Hearts so Square Enix offered him the part based on that so I've never (laughs) heard I've never heard like a non-convoluted story about how someone got involved in Kingdom Hearts. Well, I'm happy to inform you that this is one of the least convoluted stories you can know. Uh, got a, uh, an audition from my agent, uh, and uh, it was confidentiality agreement, character description, audition dialogue, a couple of PDFs, and then they had some... Um, I believe they also had some. Yeah, and then they had a bunch of Japanese reference lines, too. Nice. Um, and then I sent in my audition, and then I guess I was cast like five months later. So it was, uh, <laughs> oh, wait, when did uh, I miss that one? When the heck did we start? April of 2016 was when we worked on that one. That is a quick turnaround time, because the E3 trailer was like two months later. Well, yeah, right? it's a That's movie. That's true. So that way, that, way, that way you can really, you're basically just dubbing over a movie. They do the sound design, and so that way you can really actually... Uh, put it to the test. I think what made it take so long, because why that was delayed, was for that uh, 0.2, right? Because that's an actual game. That takes they, a long. Yeah, it was not too dissimilar from the Sky, where it's only a couple of hours. I know that they were doing pickups for that well into the summer. I know that Final Fantasy XV's delay pushed Kingdom Hearts 2.8 back a month, unfortunately. Oh, that might have had something to do it, yeah. Yeah, course. Nomura was like, we had everything ready, uh, but there was one game that got delayed that <laughs> knocked back everything. And I was like, wow, yeah. shade. I'm very pleased that they delayed Final Fantasy XV because the the end product was super polished. Absolutely worth it, yeah. From where they got that two-month uh, time period was, was very impressive. So back to auditions, um, how exactly... I guess a lot of people imagine people going into audition but i'm i'm assuming that you record at home and send it in i did i um well 
Well, with Noctis, it was a little more convoluted because I had to audition twice. Because right. um, I did, well, three times, I guess. Because it was the first audition that I did at home. And then uh, a call back, which uh, apparently I'd, I had not done so well because I was so nervous. It was my first time going in for something. And uh, and it was Keith Farley was the director. And I knew him from Mass Effect. And of so, course. oh, my God, it's crazy. Um and it was my first time in, like, a video game studio, so there were, like, all these posters up for Bioshock Infinite and Gears of War, and you're like, oh, this is insane. So I was really intimidated, and I did poorly. Uh, but I was <laughs> cast anyway, because they still believed in me. Um, and then I had a re-audition, and for the re-auditioning, that one I definitely, because that was like, oh my gosh, I could lose everything now. So I hired some coaches, and I, I did uh, some coached auditions, and then I did it with Keith in the studio, um, we did a, a special emergency audition, very, very kind of rocket sound to uh, basically give me a, a few hours and Keith for no money. Just they were like, hey, just just come on in and and redo your character um, 20 times. So it was very, <laughs> very generous of them. Yeah, that was a pretty convoluted audition. I can't imagine it being super worrisome, too, because the voice between the original demo, the Batman voice and what we get is super different, but I can't imagine anybody else playing not this <laughs> in that kind of earnest way where it's he's nice not. To hear emo that now. And it's nice to hear that now. Of course, during that time, all the YouTube comments were kill this guy. He's the worst. There's no, oh, you got to stay away from the internet. Be better. Yeah. Um, but I can also understand why Tabata was like, maybe we should look into someone else because hearing that I wouldn't have known at the time that you would have been versatile enough to completely reimagine the character. And most Japanese voice actors only do one voice. They do not do multiple voices. So for him, it's, well, if you need a new voice, then get a new actor. And thankfully, Keith and Rocket Sound and Danny Noe on the localization side stepped up and said, hold on, we know that Ray can do a younger voice. Give him a shot, (laughs) which rarely happens. It definitely, there there have been some games I've been a part of where you don't get that chance. And then you just find out, oh, it's not me. When you play the game, you're like, oh, that sucked. Um, so uh, it's it's an act of, of kindness that I'm forever grateful for. Aww. And I mean, I think it's really interesting, too, that even though the Final Fantasy 15 franchise is probably going to come to somewhat of an end once the DLCs are finished, mm-hmm. um, those characters live on forever across different Square Enix properties. Yeah, it's cool. I can't imagine Noctis not popping up again in a Dissidia situation. Yeah, or maybe sure even be in, in one of those or uh, Theat Rhythm or something like that. Yeah, I'm uh, sure. Now part of the part of the space, which is cool. forever. And, and, and Edgar as well. Like, it's so great that he's been <laughs> around forever and he finally has a voice and it's you. Yeah, that was really crazy. Very, very, uh, very weird opportunity that just came up like that. And for all of the, because there's still most of the six cast is not voiced. It just right. happened to be that that was the one guy, him and Tara were the only ones who got voiced in um, in World Up. Yeah, and I a lot of people say that Final Fantasy 15 owes a lot to Final Fantasy 6. And I definitely can get the the comparisons between the two. Um, especially in the end with the world of ruin and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's actually, it's really funny that it happened to be you across. So we've talked a little bit about the audition process, recording the trailer and everything for the master of masters. Can you tell us anything about the voice direction that you were given for the character? Well, that was a hard one because uh, Matt Mercer and I sound so similar and he's in it and they recorded him first. And my first scene was uh, me and Ira talking and so it was a bit of a challenge to differentiate the voices. Um, basically, they'd use my audition. My, it was my normal voice. That is, that is what it is. And so they said, well, maybe you can be a little more mature. So, uh, it, so I'm kind of deeper in those, uh, in the era scenes. Um, and that was, that was uh, <clears throat> as soon as that started happening, I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to be recast. It's all happening all over again. <laughs> <laughs> um, thankfully they, uh, they kept going with it, which was very, very nice. Um, but that was a, uh, that was a challenge right at the beginning. And then once we started going, it was, it was great because all the jokes were funny. And so you could just, all you had to do was say what was on the page and, and make it interesting and fun and, and match his. Yeah. So you don't you have to worry about lip flaps with him for one thing. <laughs> thankfully not. 
they did record my face while I um, while I recorded. They there was a camera on me at all times um, to do lip flaps. Um, and, but the joke was that he has, he has nothing. But they said just in case, maybe someday we'll put a, a mouth there or something. Okay, so we are going to start a new segment with you called filling in the blank points. And the reason why we're doing this is because I know that Square Enix keeps a lot of their voice actors in the dark. And usually the fanatics of the Kingdom Hearts series know more about the characters and the lore than the actors do. Mm -hmm. And you told me earlier that you have never, aside from 0.2, you haven't really played Kingdom Hearts. You didn't know much about it before being cast. Correct. So I'm going to give you a crash course about what I know about the Master of Masters in the Kingdom Hearts series. In Kingdom Hearts Key, which became Unchained Key, which became Union Cross, which is the mobile game that the Master of yeah. Masters first I shows up in. That. Yeah, but that I never met I don't think. No, he, he's not really in it, in it until now. Like, it's just happening that he's popping okay. up. Um, so that's the beginning of the Kingdom Hearts timeline. It happens hundreds, if not thousands of years before the first game. Um, and it's from the vantage point of the Master of Masters Six Apprentices. So the funny thing about the Master's Apprentices is that they're all named after the Seven Deadly Sins. Right. Lushu is short for Luxuria, which is Lust. Gula is Gluttony. Ava is Avarita Greed. Asedia is Ased, which is Sloth. Ira is Wrath. And Nvidia is Envy. So the last sin is unaccounted for, which is the seventh. And he says at the very beginning of that cover, I'm one of the seven. So a lot of people are assuming that the Master of Masters is standing in the place of Pride, which is called Superbia. Mm -hmm. All signs point to the Master being the embodiment of Pride. The no-name Keyblade that he gives to Lushu has a chimera on it, with the head of a lion and the horns of a goat. Now, all the foretellers, their unions are different animals, and each of those animals correspond to the seven deadly sins in various literature, whether it be Dante or different holy scripts. The goat is the symbol for lust, which is Lushu, and a lion, which is most commonly associated with pride. So it makes sense that the chimera, the horn of rams, uh, is the animal that's hidden on that keyblade. So uh, it, because it represents the relationship between Lushu and the master. We also know that the box that the master gives to Lushu has an engravement on the top that you have to be very careful to pause at the right frame and see. It has the Greek letter Chi, which is read as key in the Kingdom Hearts world, a hyphen and the word super. So it's looking pretty likely that the Master of Masters name is Superbia or some variant of that. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, yeah, the Master apparently is not going to appear in Kingdom Hearts 3, which is dumb because he's one of the best <laughs> characters that's happened in the past couple of years. Ah, oh, thanks. He's definitely one of my favorites. I hope that if he's not in 3, that he's at least in the next saga because this year the kingdom Hearts 3 is supposed to be the last game where the main villain is Ziganort, who is the villain of all of the kingdom Hearts series so hopefully from here on out if there's a new villain it is the master but who knows if he's a villain who knows what his intentions are um but we do know that the box is still around and one of the characters in kingdom hearts 3 is looking for it so whatever is in it is going to be a focal point for the end of the of the saga. Um, yeah. And so another interesting thing is that the Keyblade that, that the Master gives to Lushu, he says, my eye is in it, pass it down to your apprentice and him to his so that I can see the future. The Keyblade ends up in the care of a Master who has two apprentices. Their names are Ericus and Xehanort. Ericus is played by Mark Hamill, and his mm. brother apprentice Xehanort is played by Leonard Nimoy, who sadly passed away, and Master Xehanort ends up getting the Keyblade. So a lot of people are thinking, did the Master know this? Is the Master behind all the bad things that have happened in Kingdom Hearts? And Ericus is, his whole thing is trying to undo it. So it's it's really interesting to see where the apprentices have gone and what's ended up happening. Another really funny thing is that the young version of Xehanort, who wants that Keyblade, is played by Ben Diskin, who I believe is a buddy of yours. Yeah, yeah. He's awesome. He is pretty awesome. We interviewed him a couple of years ago, I think, and he did the trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3 that happened like two years ago. Cool. So it's actually, it's so that's pretty much everything I know about the Master of Masters. And he has a lot of explaining to do. My question, here's my question. Yeah, why, why does, why does, why does he have apprentice? Like, what is he? 
my it's not even why they turn out or all this stuff or the characters. It's just why is this the society that we live in, that there's keyblades that must be passed on through a series of apprenticeships with a that's guy a in a question. coat and everybody wears a mask. I guess that's, that's my question. <laughs> that I haven't seen answered anywhere. There I, there really isn't much of one. Um, we All we know is that he told his apprentices to divide, create unions, and get apprentices of themselves. Um and I don't know why the secrecy, I don't know, especially if those characters aren't appearing in Kingdom Hearts 3, I don't understand why we haven't seen any of their faces or know more about their circumstances. Especially yeah. now, because in the mobile game, I mean, spoilers to anybody who's not cut up with um, Unchained Key and Union Across, but in the mobile game, the war is over. So they're all dead. And now it's their apprentices. So I, I have, I honestly have no idea why we don't know why they're so secretive. I have no idea. Strange. Yeah, it's a strange story that comes before everything. Um, it's a straight, yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, it's like a um, vestigial tale uh, that we get that suddenly is never used again or really referenced. Right. Story, I think that the whole reason why we even got the movie in the first place was it was kind of Nomura's way of saying these people, what's important is their roles, not who they are. Yeah. And so what you're getting is a little extra, I think. Gotcha. But yeah. I'm not sure. I, I could be totally wrong. It could become important years from now. But that's what I know. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. Well, that's thank you for for uh, for uh, trying to answer. As much <laughs> Sorry. As you can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess the master became the student today. Yeah. <laughs> waka 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 waka. Yeah. So I think that covers it with Kingdom Hearts and with my personal questions. So now I'm going to open it up to the fan questions that we've been collecting across the internet. Oh, nice. Great. Okay. So uh, first one that we have here is by a user named uh, Maxielstar OA. And they say, hey, Ray, I would love to know which character you enjoy dubbing the most. Noctis, the Master of Masters, or Eve? Oh, <laughs> that's an easy question, Max, uh, for, for many different reasons. Um, definitely Noctis. Uh, because that's he's always my favorite character, just because you're able to stay with someone for years and really get to know them and, and see them in all sorts of different situations. Um, Eve, while Nier is one of the best games ever made, so uh, good. just playing the screaming part for hours on end was really hard because um, he's really, he's transforming and screaming and angry and, and anguished. So you're at a 10 out of 10 for for a few hours so that was yeah. that was really rough, rough. on me uh, physically um uh and master master is really really fun uh it's just uh it was just hard to because everything is all already done before you it's 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 tough to make the lines fit his motions which fit for a japanese phrasing so you had to kind of like redo a lot of the lines or they were they were retranslating a lot of lines to go like oh well i guess this doesn't work with this hand gesture at the end so let's try it again another way so that was kind of it was fun it was a really cool character but actually working on it was was pretty tough he's so funny i think one of my favorite things is the different voices that he does like when he's mimicking oh, people yeah, it was fun yeah it was really really fun that they uh, so they gave me a chance to do that i think another really funny thing is that um we were trying to figure it out forever before the game came out because we only heard his line once who Lucy was. And it's like your BFF Max Middleman. It, that it's, was the craziest, one of those crazy coincidences that you just go, wow, that's amazing. Did you he guys was, not know until it came out that that's what happened? Oh, no, we knew um, we knew going into it because we, we would see each other at the studio. We were both going in for it or something. Um, uh, but that was, I know that he was requested for that. Uh, he didn't audition. They just they just brought him. Wow! In. But see, it's another example of characters being requested. That's so weird. Yeah. Hopefully, we can interview him and see what the story is about that. Oh, I'm sure he knows even less. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> you're going to get even less out of him. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's always yeah. fun to talk to Saitama. <laughs> yes, absolutely. He'd be happy to oh, talk about all that stuff. Um, I also meant to congratulate you guys much earlier last night. You beat cancer. We beat cancer. We were actually amazed that because we kind of just set an arbitrary amount and we were amazed that a thousand dollars, we did it within like an hour and a half. We raised that much money. So next week, we'll see if we can raise even more. That'd be amazing. Super impressive. That's the next question, actually. How did you guys come up with the concept and the name 
for Loud Annoying and Very Annoying, which is the <laughs> Twitch show that they do um, with with uh, Robbie Damon and Max Middleman. Mm-hmm. Every week uh, at Loud Annoying on Twitch. And um, it's a... Uh... We did it. We did it for conventions because we wanted a show. Excuse me, a show that we could just bring to conventions and do. So we made a live show, and we do that at conventions. It's like an anime improv sort of sketch comedy musical thing. And then one day we sat down to play Final Fantasy with Adam Crosdale, who's Ignis, and it became super popular and successful. And we we're like, oh, I guess we should be doing this every week too. So we already had the name and the show already put together and the three of us hanging out all the time. So it was just natural that it would devolve into a Twitch channel as well. Uh, For the next couple of months, they are doing an Overwatch themed uh, series of programming where they have different actors who've been in the Overwatch series come and play the game and play their characters. So if you guys are into Overwatch, go check out Twitch at Loud Annoying and you'll see the whole schedule and when they stream and everything. I don't know when this is going up, but next week they've got Chris Parsons on, who is also the voice of Gladio in Final Fantasy yeah. 15 and a very hard guy to get a hold of. Yes, he, uh, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's quite shy in this sort of community. He's also Junkrat, so he's got quite yes. an amazing range. Very, very good. It'll be great. So you guys will be playing with Junkrat, and you'll be playing episode Gladio, I'm assuming. Yes, absolutely. So that should be fun. Um, let's see, oh, yeah. what's the next question? Oh, uh, BCZP, which I, I'm assuming that that's how they want me to say it because it's just letters. Um, this is a, says, how do you prepare for a role with a character who has no facial expressions? How do you prepare for it? <laughs> I'm assuming that they're talking about the master. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, well, unfortunately, no no preparation usually with video games. You just go in and then they give you the script. Um, <laughs> but it helps because while he doesn't have any facial expressions, he does have a lot of sweeping hand gestures. Right. So that's something that you can really get into what the character is all about by the way he moves because he certainly moves in a very specific way. I think I heard you say in an interview once, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you said something like, if you were to ever show up somewhere cosplaying as one of the characters – you would want to do the master because he doesn't have a face. Because, yeah, nobody would know. It'd be really fun. <laughs> well, uh, in light of that, I was actually, I took the liberty of drawing a quick sketch of what you would look like as the master of masters. It's hanging out in the group chat right now. Oh, perfect. Let me check it out. Whoa, what the heck? It's actually a picture. <laughs> it's an actual picture of I you and, as the master be... of masters. Wow, let me see. I can't see it very well. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Wow, did you make this? I did. Wow, that is amazing. With the eye patch, too. That is just perfect. That is really, really good. Thank you. I, uh, I have to say that's uh, that's correct. That's, uh, that's a, a really good job. I thought you were just going to do a joke and just put a picture of the master. But, uh, yeah, is so it not a joke? Something. Oh, that would have been hilarious if I... Uh, I shouldn't have gone to all the effort then. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. It's really nice. Go ahead and tweet that. That's great. Okay. Um, when you were at a convention a couple weeks ago and unfortunately you had to have an eye patch on, I was just like, oh, now I have to draw him <laughs> with an eye patch and the master robe because the master's got one yes. eye now. So I thought that was hilarious. Oh, I didn't even catch that, of course, because his eyes in the keyblade. Wow. The key Very smart. Waka, waka, waka. Wow. Got a pretty funny one here from Where Magnus on Twitter. Ray, how do you feel about the idea of the Final Fantasy XV crew being in Kingdom Hearts 3, but instead of driving the regalia, they have to drive Lightning McQueen from Pixar's cars? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that would be uh, that'd be pretty wild. I don't know if the two... Because usually <laughs> I do know if you go to a world in Kingdom Hearts, they don't connect, right? Like Beauty and the Beast doesn't talk to Hercules, right? No, the well, the funny thing is that the Kingdom Hearts characters, sometimes the Disney characters interact with each other if they're not in the same franchise, but the Square Enix characters okay. kind of pop in wherever they want. So, like, Cloud is in the Hercules world. Oh, okay. So then, yeah, this could happen. Could I think happen. that'd be uh, that'd be pretty amazing. It'd be very so going fun. off of that with a more serious thing, um, if Noctis is in Kingdom Hearts at some point, because uh, recently Famitsu did like a full spread for the anniversary of Kingdom Hearts where they pulled Japanese fans to see which characters they would like to appear. Noctis, of course, was, you know, on the top. So if he were to appear in Kingdom Hearts 
And if you can imagine him in a Disney world, what world do you think it would be fun to see him in? Uh, um... And this can be any Disney franchise, so don't worry if it, if you know if it's in Kingdom Hearts yet or not. Um, I would not want to go. I don't know. I think he would he would want to be in like Hunchback of Notre Dame. I think he those those towering spires and stuff like that kind of remind me of Insomnia. He might oh. feel a little at home at uh, in Paris. I think I'd yeah, choose I that. could see I could really see him bouncing off the cathedral. Exactly. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. I also think it would be fun to shove him in a non-serious world where he would have no choice but to just deal with with all the, the wackiness. Yeah, yeah the, the humor, like, oh the gosh, whimsy. What am I doing here? Yeah, oh, you guys are so silly. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now I'm imagining Noctis and Winnie the Pooh. Yes, that'd be very. So that funny. would be hilarious. Well, the funny thing is that um, Noctis was created by Tetsuya Nomura back when Final Fantasy 15 was Final Fantasy yes. versus 13, um, and Noctis was actually created to be kind of a foil to Kingdom Hearts' main character, Sora. Sora's yes. name meaning sky, and Noctis' full name meaning, meaning night sky. So mm-hmm. I don't I don't know if Nomura would want to put Final Fantasy 15 characters back into his hand. I don't know. I don't know how that would go, but I think it would be really fun to see a, a reimagined Final Fantasy 15 crew because sometimes in in the Kingdom Hearts series, um, the Final Fantasy characters they're standalone. They're 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 reimaginings. So like the characters from Final Fantasy 10 are fairies, or Zack from Final Fantasy 7 is a kid. Um, so I think it might be interesting to see Noctis as like a younger version of himself, like not quite as young as like the Platinum demo. But okay. you know, like a carefree teenager, maybe maybe Ignis owns a pizza shop or something, and they're all cooking together. There you go. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. And he he has you do quests of uh, looking for flour and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I would like yeah. to see him be carefree. That'll that be would fun. be nice. Yeah, he deserves that for sure. He's been Aww, through it. That would be cute. Okay, um, Chuman from the forum asks: Does Noctis even have a driver's license? Is the real reason the Empire remains in pursuit of Noct because he keeps breaking traffic laws? <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. I think you are right. That's why they're always going after him. Wow. I think so. And he would have diplomatic breaking. immunity in his kingdom, but once he starts getting out there... Yeah, he's just breaking the law. He doesn't have... I don't see any vehicle registration on that regalia license plate. <laughs> Think that's well, let me they're... tell you, I did a lot of illegal stuff in that car when I played Final Fantasy XV. <laughs> and it looks like we're going to be able to, in a future update, drive off-road, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah, I've heard that. That's so exciting. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I think that is correct. That is very correct. So, this is just going off the top of my head. So, the the DLC, you guys are still recording those and stuff. So, that's mm-hmm. it's going to take a while to be finished. Aside from the main party members... And this is just guessing. This isn't official, everybody. This is not him saying that he's in the know or whatever. What kind of DLC would you like to see, or which character's vantage point do you think it would be fun to play as that we haven't oh, yet? Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. Um, I think it would be cool to see... There's this one concept art, and I've said this in a couple interviews, of Arden in this parade uh, back way oh, back. when he was a hero. And that, like, I would want to see what the heck that world is all about. It I would, would never love happen to see because there's so many assets they'd have to make for all that sort of stuff. That's um, true. It would take forever. But <laughs> that that side of the story, I really want to see the mm-hmm. young Arden as a hero. Um, that's that's pretty fascinating to me. I would like to play a little bit more in the world of Ruin before Noct woke up. Like, I would like to see what happened with Iris and and what Cindy is doing and how they've aged and everything. Yeah, that was definitely something that we didn't see enough of, um, especially because you can't, yeah, you can't go back. Um, mm-hmm. Once you meet, make it to Hammerhead, you can't go back and uh, fight all those monsters that uh, yeah, so scary. I'd like yeah. to see some more. I, I also, I've heard rumors that Luna is on the table. I don't know. I mean, they've got the assets. She's a badass in King's Glaive. I don't mm-hmm. see why we couldn't play as her. That would be great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, and I've also heard rumors that there's one which... I, I'm not going to try to out you if you know or if you don't know, but there's one where they're talking about playing as Noct while he's asleep. So in like a nightmare scape for those oh, 10 years. Oh, that would make sense. I could see that. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely, I, I'm telling honestly, I really don't know. I, right. uh, the only thing I know is is we're recording prompto uh, now. So that's something that we're, we're working on that's coming out uh, June, I think, right? I think so. I think so. Yeah, it's the only thing. I don't even know anything... Ignis, I have no idea what that's what that's. Even I'm like. really looking forward to Ignis. That, yeah. I, I don't know what's going to happen, obviously, but it's going to be great. Yeah. yeah, we have no idea. 
So yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of different ways that the uh, DLC could go for this game. Super exciting. We have a request. We actually got this uh, quite a few times. So I can't even say one person who requested it. Um, they want you to say, "May your heart be your golden key." In oh, the my favorite voice. line. <laughs> in what voice? In the master's voice. May your heart be your golden key. <laughs> I say it all the time. Did you ever find out who the golden key guy was? I did. Uh, eventually find out. I've decided not to. I did ask uh, the localization guy. Uh, oh, and he did tell me the other guys. Uh, Dino is Dave Mitchell. Aha. Uh-huh. And Dino was Dave B. Mitchell. And Wiz, because this is the thing. I played Wiz in uh, the demo. So Dusk Guy. did right. not play him in the game. Wiz is voiced by Andre Sogliuzzo, is his name, uh, for the game itself. Andre Sogliuzzo. What a name. Yeah. And then he also told me what who the Golden Key guys. I And he says, uh, who is blameless in the over-triggering of his line, was voiced by dot, dot, dot. But I figure, not, not, let's not give him any uh, uh, Twitter hate. Oh, uh, it's, not, it's not his fault that his line plays so many times. Muse Yip asks, and I, I don't know how you'll be able to answer this, I guess just from what you know, um, which character from the Kingdom Hearts series is your favorite and why? And I think the Master is a valid answer. Yeah, uh, definitely the Master, just because he has so much mystery about him. I guess everyone has so much mystery, but for him, he's he was built up to be this big, scary master of all masters character with the organization cloak but then he turns out to be this this fun weird random dude and i think yeah. that's a really fun archetype to play i think it's really interesting too that kingdom hearts has probably the most diverse voice cast that has ever existed you've got yeah, people from western animation people. anime people yeah, yeah. Haley joel osmond um and then people like Matthew Mercer and Travis Willingham, but also complete unknowns like the girl who voiced Ava. I mean, it's crazy. Um, but that's oh, the fun thing. Voiced Ava. She, she's nobody in particular. She, well, she. I don't want to say she's nobody, but she. Um, yeah. She's she's been in some Nickelodeon stuff. She's fifteen. She's oh, fifteen wow. years old. She's never done a video game before, and she's more of a singer. I have wow. no idea how they got her to, but she. I mean, she was she's great. Um, she's probably one of my favorites, actually, in that cover. But yeah, it's crazy how sometimes they'll just pull people out of thin air, and sometimes it's someone you've known your whole life. Yeah, that's cool. So someone actually asked, keeping that in mind, um, out of all the people that you've worked with, and I'm sure that being an anime or video game voiceover artist, you actually don't get to work with that many people like in the booth. That's exactly what I was going to say. I haven't worked with anybody other than one session I did with Jim Peary, who plays Regis. That was the only time I've ever worked with someone in the booth. Other than that, never has it happened. Interesting. So who would you like to work with, either people who have been in projects with you or someone who you've been a fan of? Who would you like to work with? Like one. I mean, yeah, I would really just like to work with Max and Robbie on something. That'd be really freaking cool. Uh, it's never... We've been in so many things together, but never I've never been in the booth with those guys. So oh. that's something that I would that's a personal goal of mine is, is work with my close friends. That would be really fun. It's it's hard in localization because you're dubbing and they have to be so concentrated on you yeah. overtaking what's there before as opposed to in something in Western animation, you guys can't yeah. all be together. I hope that happens. Um, I would love for Robbie to get in Kingdom Hearts because he's the only one who, who isn't, apparently. It's true, yeah. So we Save can grab him on here and have him on here. I think, yeah. so. I, I think he's got a good shot. He's got one of those voices. So wrapping it up, what is your advice to aspiring young voice actors? Um, well, the I guess the, the most important thing is patience. Uh, I remember coming out of college and saying, like, Oh my gosh, I got to start working. I got to start getting stuff. And what you, what I've learned these past couple of years is even if you have stuff, because it took me like eight years to get here, even if you have stuff that you have worked on, it still takes years for it to even come out for you to take credit for it. Um, that sort of stuff. So patience i think is the most important thing that was that has been my my motto for the last couple of years just learning that yeah and sometimes you're uncredited even when it does come out 
Yes, so that happens fine. a lot. So Anyone on IMDb who can help me get my credit in Horizon Zero Dawn, I'd love that because I'm trying and it's not oh. going through. I don't understand. Uh, so yeah, it's tough. It's uh, it's really tough. But aren't you in the new Persona? Did I make that up? I am. Yes, I am. I'm not. See, and you're uh, not credited I, for it. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't put it on IMDb. So it's a bummer. Well, if anyone has any any friends at IMDb who can edit that up, let us know because this man has got to be credited. He's not in nearly <laughs> enough video games. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness! Well, Ray, thank you so much. Where can we find you in the future, and what kind of projects do you have coming up? I have. Uh, what is today? Thursday. Today's Wednesday. Thursday, the thirteenth. Well, I'll say keep an ear out for me uh, this Saturday. Uh, for an anime premiere for Blue Exorcist. I will be in that. I won't reveal who I am yet, but uh, I did get cast in that show, which is very nice. Are so, you going to be at any upcoming panels, cons, live streams, yes, podcasts? I'm, I am working on my website to get that on my website at raychase.com. Um, and the next one is in New Zealand. And then after that, I have MetroCon, Edmonton, and San Japan for the rest of the year. Hopefully we'll get this out uh, soon enough so that we don't, so that you guys can catch them if you didn't oh, know. And uh, you can follow me at Ray Chase on Twitter. That's great. Also, you have an amazing website. I love the banner art. Um, Who did that? Her name is very confusing. Let's see if I, <laughs> if I Google her, I can get to her. Yeah, it's Ainsley Askew uh, is her name. I don't think that's her real name. Right. Uh, but Cat Ghost is usually what she goes under on her. Uh, if you search up Cat Ghost, you'll find all of her pixel art. I'm a big pixel art fan, so I, I found her. And I really liked her. She's As very good. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Please follow Ray Chase on his various um, internet accounts. Remember to check in with Lava on Twitch. And I believe that, eh, I don't know if we'll get this up soon enough, but tomorrow, right, you are doing a Twitch with someone else, with Kyle, the voice of 9S in Nier. Yes, you are absolutely correct. So if we if I can get this up in the next 24 hours, <laughs> look out for him there. But <laughs> cool. otherwise, next week, Chris Parson is going to be on Lava. So check that out. PJ, I have to say, it was one of the most well-researched interviews I've ever done. Thank you for, uh, for all your so hard much. work going into airing. It means a great deal. Uh, it, it really makes a, whole, a huge difference being interviewed with someone who really knows and cares. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much for, for responding. You were the most requested guest. Thank you. I hope you have a great day. Cheers. Have, have a, good a day. great next couple of weeks. I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, guys, that'll be it for another episode of Off the Chain. Thanks again to our special guest, Ray Chase. I don't know if you guys could tell, but I was so nervous. <laughs> I was really excited to get to talk to him. Thank you, Ray. It was truly a pleasure. Hopefully we can get you on again, maybe next time with the rest of the Lava crew. We just got to get Robbie in the Kingdom Hearts series. Well, one thing at a time. So if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, you can by following at K-H-I Dandelion. And you can use Twitter to suggest uh, special guests for next time. You can also just use the hashtag off the chain. And uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do. I have no idea who the next guest will be, but I'm really excited. Special thanks again to Rob Carballo from geekbeatradio.com. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. I'll see you guys next time. <clears throat> May your heart be your golden key. Ha ha ha.